Okay, today I want to have a little conversation with you about something we don't often talk about here at Gordon School, which is what happens after you graduate from Gordon. We're a nursery through eighth grade school. We have three-year-olds through 14 and 15-year-olds here at Gordon. And we have, I think, the most beautiful, powerful graduation ceremony that you're going to find anywhere for our eighth graders under the tent up there in June. But what happens after that? And I think if you look at what happens after that to kids, who sat in the seats that you're sitting in now, who were in the classrooms that you were in. Think about Java Command. <laughs> you think about the kids that were sitting where you are now, who were in the classrooms that you were in, who had many of the same teachers that you had, and we look at what, what's happening now, you're going to find courageous learners and compassionate leaders all over the town, all over the state, all over the country, and all over the world. And I want to spend a little time today reflecting on that. So, let's just start with some people that are connected to folks in this room. Let's take... <laughs> athletics. Let's take athletics, for example. Let's look at things in the Providence area that are very obvious to see, that are out in public, where Gordon graduates are representing all of you. So let's start with sports. You may remember Madeline's sister, Caroline Powell, and Margot's sister, Chachi Matu, who not that long ago, 18 months ago, were on this campus wearing Gordon uniforms. This one from basketball. They played field hockey and lacrosse here at the Gordon School. Right now, you'll find them at Moses Brown representing you in field hockey and lacrosse. And are we even playing squash, I think, for these two representing you? Here's Addison Ginn, Miss Renan's son, who you might remember. How many of you remember Addison Ginn? Addison Ginn. Played every sport we had to offer here at Gordon School. He's a sophomore at PCD. He's playing basketball, throwing the javelin, finishing the top 10 for the javelin. Soccer. How many of you know Jacqueline Felice? Girls that go to Gordon School basketball camp in the summer, one of the counselors is Jacqueline Felice, who grew up here, spent some time sitting in these red chairs. Here she is in eighth grade, class of 2016. If you went across the street from Moses Brown over to Wheeler, and you asked, who's the captain of the soccer team and the varsity basketball team? The answer is? The answer is? <laughs> Jacqueline Felice. One of her best friends when she was here, sitting in these red chairs next to her, was Rachel Romain. You know Rachel Romaine? How many of you know Rachel Romaine? Rachel Romaine is a senior a few blocks away from Wheeler and MB over at Lincoln School. Here she is as the captain of the Lincoln field hockey team who won the state championship just a few weeks ago. There she is with the trophy, getting ready to go play college lacrosse. Who did uh, Rachel play in the finals? Who was the other team in the finals of the state championship? Sophia Klein? Who was it? Wheeler. Wheeler, the team that won the year before. Let's look at the Wheeler team. I don't know, I see a lot of Gordon kids up there. There's Sophia Klein, Victoria Wasuf, Maddie Lee, and Hannah Zivon. If you went to the championship game, the state championship field hockey game, you could call it Wheeler versus Lincoln. I call it Gordon versus Gordon. <laughs> Here's two. How many of you remember Kari Bonanno and Meredith Langmuir? Here they are in eighth grade. They played, they grew up here together. 
They played field hockey and lacrosse and basketball. They left here after an undefeated field hockey, basketball, and lacrosse season. And they went to Moses Brown where they won four straight consecutive championships. Four state titles in a row. Remind me who the captains were the senior year of the Moses Brown State Championship team? I'll give you a hint, they were Gordon graduates. They now are playing lacrosse, Kari at Princeton, and Meredith at a school called Harvard. <laughs> My safety school. <laughs> okay, here's Kari's brother, or older brother, Nick. I love this photo of Nick Bonanno. This is from the Civil Rights trip in 2013. You'll notice in the back there's a teacher talking to a class. <laughs> You'll notice Nick Bonanno is focused at the Southern Poverty Law Center in lots of rain gear. He went on to go play lacrosse at Middlesex and is now playing college lacrosse at Colorado College. How many of you are Middlesex? Miles, how do you know about Middlesex? I visited there once. Say that louder, please. I visited there once. You visited there once. When Miles Craddock visited Middlesex, he was interviewed by Jamie Pine, oh, yeah. who grew up here at the Gordon School. <laughs> yeah. Did you see Jamie? Yeah, yeah. She, yeah. This is Jamie on the right in fifth grade here at Gordon School. I believe Mr. Carson was one of her teachers. Is that correct? Here she is as a we move on to a new sport, tennis. College tennis player at Colby College. Are there other outstanding tennis players who have represented you well from the Gordon School? Ishan, can you think of any? Here's Kailas, Ishan's older brother in early childhood. If you open the Providence Journal during tennis season, you will certainly see Kailas. <laughs> a national merit finalist in the classroom. He's one of the few players from Rhode Island to win A singles in the New England Prep School Invitational Tennis Tournament. There's another tennis player who went to Gordon School, Mr. Carson Todd. I don't know if you know this. Here's Jared Donaldson, who was ranked as high as 48 in the world. He's played in the US Open in Mr. Carson's class and Mr. Kravitz's class here at the Gordon School. Did you know this, Lola? Lola did not know this. You do now. <laughs> if you turn on Wimbledon, you might see a Gordon graduate on the screen. But let's move on from sports. Let's talk about performing arts. You name it. Dance, music, theater, and you walk in any theater in Providence that, sh that has the performing arts, you're going to find Gordon graduates who are crushing it. There's Elizabeth Powell, Maddie's older sister, one of the top dancers around, who's danced in Maryland, California, New York, and as a senior at Lincoln School. There's an a cappella group at Wheeler called the 18 Wheelers. They may come here and perform at some point during a middle school meeting this year. This year there are four of the 18 come from Gordon School. Henry Stanton, you know who that is? Yeah. Miss yeah. Hodgins' son. Miss Hodgins' son, Henry Stanton. Maddie Lee, Randall Ganasty, Nathan Heronian, all Gordon graduates. Millie, am I missing one? Uh, no, I'm just commenting that Henry's coming in tomorrow to get ready for this audition with four minutes. Make sure to say hi to Henry tomorrow. All of them were G notes when they were here at Gordon School. That's almost a, that's not quite, I'm not a, Ms. Horton can help me with this. It's not quite a fourth of the 18 wheelers, but I gotta tell you, even so, that's not the percentage of Gordon kids who go to Wheeler. It's not 25% or 20%. Gordon students are overrepresented in the performing arts at any of these schools. Now, Moses Brown, just built a brand new beautiful theater. You may remember some of these spaces from the past few years. 
Raise your hand if you know someone who you see up on the screen. All right, we've got Nate Kelton up here in Hairspray, Emma, Ursula, Vivian, and Vivian, who were in baguettes in that photo. We've got Dylan and Covey in Hairspray when they were in seventh grade, and Gianna Peritore in Hairspray when she was in eighth grade. I went with Miss Massey to see Shakespeare in Love at Moses Brown on a Saturday night a few weeks ago. There were 12 students in the play. Nine of the students were Gordon graduates in Shakespeare in Love at Moses Brown. It was the Gordon High School Theater production. I didn't know we had a high school theater program. Check this out. There they are with their old drama teacher from back when they were, some of them as young as third and fourth grade, with Miss Massey. <laughs> At Lincoln School, here's Sophie Grosswood and Lydia, class of 2016. How many of you saw School of Rock when we did it here? Oh, yeah. You might remember these two. Here they are. Uh, Lincoln had materials they passed out or they publicized for their theater program. You can take a look at who they put on the cover of their program. Sophie and Lydia. Lydia went to a national Shakespeare competition in New York City. Kids all over the country competing in Shakespeare. Finished top 10 in the country. Okay, enough about Providence. Let's go further out. Let's go beyond college, let's go beyond high school, and let's talk about what Gordon graduates are doing out in the world. You are part of a school and a legacy of kids who grow up and go out and lead everywhere they are. You can pick any topic you want. You can pick law, you can pick politics, medicine, writing, underwater shark photography. Make something up. You will find where it's graduate. You think I'm kidding. Let's talk about medicine. I went to the young, uh, there was a reunion here the Wednesday night before Thanksgiving. And it was class of 2000 through 2009. I didn't know this. In the class of 2000, small classes back then, there were four doctors from that one class, including Claire Lewis, who is an emergency medicine at the University of Pennsylvania, and Jason Tartaglioni, who's an orthopedic doctor here in Providence, and also a current Gordon parent. There's two other doctors in that class, helping people all over the country. Business and economics. Here's Karin Takar, class of 2005. Now, he's involved in finance, but he's also a board member of a company called Encoded Therapeutics. I'm gonna read you a little bit about what they do. How many of you in eighth grade have studied genes? <laughs> With Ms. <laughs> Ms. Flynn. Okay, Karin Takar is part of an organization that's trying to figure out how to use viral gene therapy to offer potential life-changing advances towards lasting cures for diseases. Sat in some of the same rooms you sat in studying science and is now looking at viral gene therapy to help people with some of the most serious diseases that, that they face. Here's Vivian Liu. I think she was in Miss Renan's advisory. She's a research uh, assistant at the London School of Economics, which is one of the top business schools in the world. After leaving at Gordon, after high school, she went on to go to Bard College at Columbia in New York City. Then she went to Barcelona to get an MBA. And now she's studying MBA. Um, business. 
There are big problems in the world. There are big problems in the world that Gordon graduates are working to solve. So looking at, in developing countries that have cities that are getting bigger by the minute, how do you solve problems in these countries? Vivian Liu from Ms. Renan's advisory 11 years ago is one of the people, if you went to London School of Economics and said, who knows how to do this? It would be a Gordon graduate. Talk about science and technology. Here's Tucker Craig, Crosby's older brother, from eighth grade. Here he is today. He's still in college at Davidson. He has not graduated yet. He studied computer science. And he's so good at it, they've already given him a job in Silicon Valley. For by the time he gets out, he's going to move to Northern California and be an engineer and programmer at Box Inc. Still in college, already hired, headed out to go be a programmer and engineer. Here's two young men. You might not know, but you do know. Kobe Unger works at MIT in the lab there and helps people use the tools that they have there to create new solutions. Alex Unger, class of 2003, is the project manager at a tech firm in Northern California. Do you know who their mother is? No. Um, Someone. Ellie, who is your fourth grade science teacher? Miss Kettner. These are Miss Kettner's sons. I knew there was one. Across the country. And you see it in Are you surprised they're using science to help people? Yeah. Now. Interesting tidbit. Alex <laughs> lives in San Francisco, and every year he goes on a 585 mile bike ride. I'll say that again 585 mile an hour, not mile an hour. <laughs> that would be fast. 585 mile bike ride. That would really be fast. The bike ride raises money to look for a cure for HIV and AIDS. Yeah. There's another Gordon graduate who does that, who did that bike ride last year. How many of you went to Gordon graduation? Who went to Gordon graduation last year? Last year's graduation speaker was Rebecca Bentheim. Oh, I remember her. She taught at the graduation. She's a teacher now, teaching fifth grade in Los Angeles. She's also a musician. She might have been playing up here with Pepper if they were in the same grade. A playwright, an artist. She also did that bike ride last year, representing Gordon School. Now, what's interesting about her, back in the classroom as a teacher helping fifth graders, she came back to Gordon School for the reunion. Here she is at graduation giving the speech. Do you know we have a young alum, a young alum, usually 10 years out, come back and give the speech at graduation? So 2030, we'll see one of you back here. 2031, 2032, and 2033. Now she came back again for the reunion before Thanksgiving. What do you think the first thing she did was when she came back to her old school? Teachers. Look for her old teachers? Yeah. She couldn't find one of her old teachers. Classroom. So if you went to your old school and couldn't find your old teacher, even if you're 25 years old, what would you do? How would you get in contact with her? She went and wrote on Mr. Carson's board. And she wasn't alone. Most of the class of 2009 showed up and wrote all over Mr. Carson's board late at night at their reunion, just like they used to do when they were in fifth grade. Oh, yeah, that is. Oh, he moved his desk. He moved his desk. Did he move his desk? No, it's not. That's his, that's his board. Talk about politics. 
City of Providence, Matt Shoemake, class of 2005, on the left. He is the Deputy Chief of Staff for the Mayor of Providence, Mayor Lorza. That basically means he runs much of the Mayor's office. Here's an article about when he was appointed, born and graduate, in many of the same classrooms you were in 14 years ago and he's helping run the city of Providence. The arts! <laughs> Here's Georgia Hunter, class of 1992, was back a few years ago. She wrote a book called We Are the Lucky One. We Were the Lucky Ones. It's about, based on her family, what's your next unit in history, eighth graders? <laughs> Studying the Holocaust. One of the most serious topics you study in school, you'll study with Mr. Anderson. Her family escaped the Holocaust and was spread out all over the world. She wrote a book about it. It got published. And recently it was picked up to try to make it into a TV show that you might see on HBO telling the story of this family trying to escape from the Holocaust, this true story, written by, that's right, a Gordon graduate. If you went to New York City and went to the Museum of Modern Art, you might find Jesse Parsons, class of 2005 there, working in the development office. It's the MoMA. It's the MoMA. Okay, we did politics, art, music, law, name it. There's even board game inventors <laughs> that went to Gordon School. Wow. Andrew Stachow, class of 2001, made up a board game called Coopoly. He's the co-owner of Toolbox, which is an education and social action, Toolbox for Education and Social Action, which offers cooperative educational materials and programs. So not just any board game. He tried to make a board game to help people cooperate, and work together better. That's not like a Gordon graduate to you, Carolina? Yes. That's the right answer. All right, so again, the captains on the state championship teams all around town. Field hockey, Gordon, basketball, Gordon, lacrosse, Gordon, soccer, Gordon, tennis, Gordon, theater, Gordon, 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 Gordon. Running the mayor's office, doctors, Board game makers. If you just made something up. You made, you made something up that sounded cool, like underwater shark photography. I don't know, as an example. Yes! <laughs> Lauren Benoit, class of 2008, studied marine biology at the University of Rhode Island. This is a photo she took. This is what her job is. She takes photos of sharks. I didn't know that was a job. Underwater shark photographer. Now, last one, very recent. I don't know if you've heard of Forbes magazine. It's a very famous business magazine. Forbes magazine. You find it all over the world. You find it in Tokyo. You can find it in London. You can find it in New York. You can, and everywhere. And they have an issue where they pick 30 people under the age of 30 to watch. 30 people under the age of 30, up and coming leaders. We might call them here at Gordon School compassionate leaders. 30 for the whole country. 
in this category about policy and government. In the littlest state in the country, a little school in East Providence, you're probably not surprised to hear one of the 30 people came from the Gordon School. But it's not one of the people. There are two different Gordon graduates. Oh, yeah. Yay. There are two <laughs> different Gordon graduates on the top 30 list from Forbes magazine. Tavi Abel, do you know who her mother is? Say louder. Miss Martindale. Tavi's mother is Miss Martindale. Right here. She co-founded Govern for America. That's trying to help recruiters diversify local governments. So that the local governments do a better job of representing the people in their local communities. That's what Gordon graduates are doing out in the world representing all of you. At the same time, Katie Segaro is the co-founder of Asylum Connect. Now, there are young LGBTQ people out, out there who don't necessarily go to a place like Gordon School and don't have a safe place to be themselves. And she started an online, a mobile app to help people connect in the LGBTQ community to find a safe place. That's what these two are up to. So, let's be really clear. If you go to New York City and you go to one of the top museums in the world, the Museum of Modern Art, you're gonna find a Gordon graduate there. You go to the mayor of Providence's office, you find a Gordon graduate. You go see who's holding the trophies at the state championships, it's often Gordon graduates with the Captain C they're wearing. You go to the London School of Economics and you want to figure out how to solve some of the biggest problems in the world. Who's looking at gene therapy? Gordon graduates. You go underwater looking for sharks. You're going to find a Gordon graduate doing good work. Now here's the secret. Two things I want to point out. Why is this? There's lots of reasons. I'm going to highlight two. You live in a really diverse world. And not everybody gets to grow up in a school where you get to grow up with lots of different identities and lots of different perspectives all day, every day, in every class and every recess to help prepare you for that complicated, diverse world. Where multiple perspectives are baked into everything we do here. And that's going to make you better critical thinkers, and better collaborators, and better communicators. And the second thing is this. You have an advantage over most kids I can think of. And that's this. In middle school, you get to go to an end to eight school. You get to go to a school that ends in eighth grade. There are a lot of schools that are in middle school that are just six to eight. You're there three quick years between elementary and high school. A lot of kids go to a school that's like a nursery to 12th grade, and middle school's right in the middle. Well, why does that matter? At Gordon School, this middle school theater is your theater. It's not the high school kids theater that you sometimes get to use. That gym over there is the gym, is your gym. It's not some high school gym that every once in a while you get to use it. When the second and third graders go home and they play basketball in their driveway, they pretend to be you. You have leadership at Gordon School from a young age that other kids don't get. And it's nowhere more apparent than in the eighth grade year here at Gordon School, where you are leaders and you feel like leaders, 
and everybody's looking to you. And that practice, for years and years and years, culminating in eighth grade, is it any surprise that Gordon graduates go out in the world and lead everywhere they are, which is exactly what you're going to do as soon as you're done with study hall today. Okay? I'll stick around if you have individual questions about any of these individual people. I hope you found them inspiring today. I'm certainly inspired by them. And it won't be long before we are telling kids of the future about all of you and the great things you're doing. Okay? Fifth grade. Have a wonderful day.